a last war poem. I tell you, this is the last word for this war, this little side war we were the center of. There is no justice from poetry. Any veteran can tell you that. They want their land, their lives, their livestock back. Grenade fishing in the aftermath of the Battle of Pupati has lost its novelty to the man with a bullet fragment rattling in his body, slowly tearing him apart. Right, they tell me. Right what? We lost. We were forgotten. We are ghosts. We are victims of fat tigers and foreign policy. There is no Valhalla, only memories of specter gunships. There is no Elysium, only pleas for asylum. This jungle was filthy. There was shit. There was blood. There were refugees who to this day cannot explain why they were the enemy when the war came. Their sons fought. Their brothers died. Their uncles, maimed, were hauled, screaming into the shadows of a plain of jars. Right, they tell me, so people won't forget, so someone will know. Lift the broken bodies with my words. Bring them out and say, we did not die in vain. For every bullet hole, let there be a word to stand as a monument. For every lost limb, let there be a sonnet to stitch the truth back together. For every eye gone blind, let there be something to take its place. Something, anything. How can you not have words for the war of whispers? And how can you not shout now that the whispering is done? And I swear, each time I break this promise, but the next time will be the last word I write about this damn war. Narrative of Anaxios. Never read my life as the diary of some sad refugee. My account is not intended as a routine narrative of adversity overcome. Mere survival, once again, transcending a descent to white-hot hell converted to the placid limbo of frogs. No, I miss the familiar strange here in a way you cannot fathom. Our hard ghosts remain vigilant, thin as an ink scratch on an old palm leaf, haunting with a tongue claimed incomprehensible. The old signposts have been lost, but in strangeness, possibility. I hope, moving, a shadow in uncertain passages, making melodies for newsless souls. In daring this, might I move some limitless star? We, scrambling to replace what we barely knew, barely recognize our tangled metamorphosis, our hymns of recovery, organs of uncertain purpose in the body cosmic, mistaken easily for endings, not new beginnings. My Secret War Within. The first film in the world to feature Lao was John by the man who would one day film King Kong with ample Fei Ray. He never returned to the heirs of Lan Chan, but he died among New Year's and April Fools in the year I was born, when covert American bombs stopped falling like steel rain over the realm of a million elephants. Dr. Dooley played Dumbo for us in the hills, flying pachyderms and talking crows, useless feathers, something about belief, while ravens, bands of pole, dug into the plain of jars, and we made our fresh coasts for the next generation. I never understood their stories until years later, when my father, almost dead from a thousand smokes, referred to them as heroes, pointing to a portrait of a young boy who could have been me in another un-American lifetime by these men, M16 in hand, smiling for a reporter's camera. On the edge of Detroit, I grew up among Godzilla films, the aliens of UHF, alarming, relentless, a comfort more family than the silent faces of Apocalypse Now, or slinky women who promised love for a long time if I understood American dollars and, and fold metal jackets. My teacher tries to show me the Joy Luck Club, Air America. Here is the truth of who you are, surely. I return to alien nation, enemy mine. They live for Finn. My love says I can't tell my story talking about other people's films, 
No one's seen half of what you've watched. No one's seen half of what I lived, I reply, trying to shred my life into ink just to remain. Matty Doe made a ghost movie the other day. Chantilly shows me. We can't talk about half the wills we've had, our wars gone by, her crazed ghosts, mine. Little Laos on the Prairie magazine gets a letter from a man who wants to make a movie about our war. Says he knows a great place to shoot in Hawaii. Same, same, but different. Spread the word, send some cash. He has a cause, his special vision, if not the facts. I lost his number and cast my father's ashes into the Mississippi. The last I heard, he now wished he'd spoken to assassins instead. The Buddha of Bombings. There are more cluster bombs than people in Laos. They stopped falling in the year I was born. America left soon after. The other day, a young woman I know saw people turn in war scrap into fashionable bracelets. No one considers turning them into statues of Buddha. Recycling only goes so far out here. A third of those who die every year are under 12, caught in the hot, swift center of flame and shrapnel, dormant for nearly four decades. Most of their parents weren't even born when these lethal leftovers were dropped. In America, my nieces sing, London Bridge is falling down. In Laos, my nieces sing songs not to touch the bombies. My new next door neighbor is an old F-105 pilot my father picked up from the Hanoi Hilton. He knows my country well, but we don't have much to talk about except our gardens. My cousin, flew into Afghanistan at the start of a new war. We haven't spoken in years. I look at the picture of hell in my mother's temple near Modesto. It's a new year, and young children run with toy guns sold to them by a vendor who could care less about karma and history. Our monks bless every living thing in sight, hoping it will do some good for a change. Babylon Gallery. She brought the gray spoon we hung upon the gallery wall from the Talat stalls in downtown Ponsavon. She was supposed to be collecting Da Nen folk tales, and we were showing off art we were so certain would change the way the world sees that stumbled elephant we rode in on. She was an indelicate work, this one, a light cockatrice feather, crude malice her center, her bowl an echo of bomb craters whispering mad as Gorgon. They dine with spoons like this all over there, we're informed. Hammered from war scraps the dogs find indigestible. They sold me this one, certain it's American bullets at the core. It was time, they said, we took them back. I pondered how many startled people this carnivorous spoon passed through in her previous incarnations, karma denying her a role in a finer flatware set for the saints. Oddly, for as many threads as she cut short, she was too weak to be the butter knife she should have been. Swords into plowshares, someone scribbled casually in a comment card. One of many remarks, disposable as plastic sporks. Gop jai for nothing, Falan. The bomb popped in his face while he was digging a fire pit, or his family squatting on the old mercenary camp in Shenquan province, so notorious for its UXO. They live there for the American plumbing, our host said flatly, watching volleyball games by the airstrip. This was wholly routine. The ruined grounds were frozen. Explosives, dormant blooms below, can be mistaken for ice and rock easily. And he screamed the whole while as we loaded him into the back of our rickety plane to Vinchan that allowed aviation picked up from the Russians when everyone thought the Cold War was going somewhere. The California girl on holiday was aghast and found it quite unscenic. What a pall on her search for highs. In Vatin Peng, a monk named Tsuk confided discreetly, we really hate hippies. Burning Eden, one branch at a time. My father, a skull before the wars were ever, never saw my mother's flight in terror as our humbled kingdom fell to flame and shell. My mother was stripped to ink among the bureaucrats, 
a number for the raw statistics of jungle errors, collated in the cult ledgers marked classified, secret. My feet, dangling in the Mississippi, have forgotten what the mud in Vinchon feels like between your toes, while my hands hold foreign leaves, and I whisper, maple, oak, weeping willow, as if saying their names aloud would rebuild my home. Liberty. The tree of liberty devours the loyal, grinding them between burning flag teeth and a ton of open doors. Blue lakes formed in the footprints of babe, while the trail of tears formed the bloody river. Washington had a thing for breaking cherry trees and raising hemp that was good for strong ropes to bind us all together in a frenetic world of neckties and necessities. No one knows the name of Afghan heroes or Hmong veterans whose fathers raised opium crops now littered with landmines. Few can tell you where Russia is, even after 50 years of cold wars in tropical nations they never vacationed in personally. They would be unable to tell you how many of our allies are in an impossible debt negotiating a cost-effective betrayal. But they can tell you about friends and Miss October. Miscellaneous documents outlining illiterate farmers with $200 anti-tank weapons have surfaced to air our missile mania, a culture where no one sees the irony of naming a million-dollar cruise missile after a tomahawk while defanged reservations cope with underfunded schools. People laugh as immigrants report stories of American giants who press you beneath their green farms stained with dollars when it's time to eat. Cannibalized ideas and epics lay exhausted, scattered apple seeds in urban canyons formed by alien policies of war and leverage, and a great love of sequels. Half of a nation has never seen an orchard, only the recycled city papers bear being ignored in as usual. Somehow, the Cubans managed to preserve the purity of baseball and cigars, while we still can't imagine the rules to Canadian curling, despite our open borders. And strangely, when a laughing yellow cab driver, who was a former engineer from Iraq, tells me about U.S. chemical weapons and acid rain, I'm just not as surprised as I wish I could be. His last words rang like a cracked bell outside of a smoking capital of conspiracies. When there's a new war, watch. A refreshing new ethnic restaurant will open in your neighborhood soon. <laughs>